I've known John a long time. I knew John when he was an ordinary, busy businessman. Now he's still a busy man. He's devoting his life to, in the service of humanity. Here's a guy that has taken substantially all of his assets and deployed them into a foundation for the sole purpose of changing lives. After losing his father to the war, John Vulcan's impoverished mother was forced to send her sons to an orphanage. John eventually escaped East Germany and emigrated to Canada with less than $100 in his pocket. He took advantage of every opportunity, rising from dishwashing to acquiring real estate to finally building a furniture empire, which he sold, donating his personal wealth to help others. All I wanted to do, give back, and, and uh, you know, um, but I didn't have a clear vision how to do that. John saw a huge need to save lives at home, our younger generation who were losing their way to drugs, alcohol, and crime. People go to detox centers and being detoxed, and a couple months later they go back because it's a revolving door. Nobody really wants to go into a program and change their life, especially when you're struggling with addiction. When you take the time to care about an individual that has nowhere to turn and you give them that hand, that helping hand, that is the true measurement of a good human being. He has changed and contributed to saving people's lives, changing people's lives, empowering people. I realized what was needed is to teach life skills. At his treatment centers, which include a one-of-a-kind food and furniture warehouse, he has mentored several hundred young men and women struggling with addiction. This unique two-year program gives them a job, life-changing skills, confidence, and a new clean life. It's so important for individuals to stay sober. They need to be become good employees. So we teach them proper work skills. I was put into the butcher department and since I've been put in there, I've started an apprenticeship program. Now I'm two months away from completing my apprenticeship hours and then I have to go to school for two months after I graduate and I'll be a licensed butcher. So that'll be a trade that I keep with me for the rest of my life. Before I came here, I was just a horrible person, dark, you know, I would steal $5 from anybody I knew. Um, very upset, lost, lonely, scared. Um, today I feel like I have an immense support group in my life and I'm going to go somewhere and be somebody and I can be that for other people as well as my children. If I hadn't found the John Vulcan Academy, if I was lucky, I'd be sitting in jail right now, but I'd probably be dead. So this the academy has given me my helped me find my soul again. It's hard for me not to get emotional when talking about John because of what he's what he's done for me, and and just seeing it with everyone else that's in the program. It's amazing when the change after just a couple of months when uh, the parents visit them and say, I mean I hear it all the time it's things like. Uh, they went through so many programs, nothing worked. What do you do to my son? He's different, he talks different, he even looks different. Sometimes I have days where I sit in the mirror and I just look at myself like, why wasn't this person ever here before? Where was this guy? He was inside of me, I just chose not to look at him. And that's what John's brought out of me, is he's given me the opportunity to look at this person. The program has been so successful, a new treatment center is being built next door. It will give more young people the opportunity to change their lives. They will live here and, like so many before them, be given the chance to acquire the needed life skills to maintain permanent sobriety. But despite his success, the founder of the John Vulcan Academy wonders if he has done enough. Something drives me to say, look, you gotta do something, you gotta do better. You, you know, there's so much work to do. But I also realize you can solve the world's problem. All you can do is make it a better place because of you. I feel like someday, someday we stand before God. 
And I'm worried that he'll say, John, you could have done better. <laughs>